All right. So we were talking offline about um, what, how your, your impression of a photo is affected by either knowing about how it was taken, whether it's the gear or the lens or the effort or, you know, the medium, whether it's film or digital or, or any of those factors, right? Basically what goes into making the photo, the, the modality, if you will, of the photo, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we wanted to kind of bring that up as a topic today to see, you know, what everybody thought, you know, the crew here and just kind of put it out there, you know, like what goes into enjoying or appreciating a photo or if anything besides the photo itself speaks to you or matters or should it matter is really the question. So um, anybody got a, any, any thoughts on that? Yeah. It, I feel like it shouldn't affect your perception of the photo. How hard, like, just because you worked really hard on a photo doesn't suddenly make your photo any better than it would have been if you didn't work very hard on it. Like if you, the fact that you woke up like at two in the morning to go take this photo camped out all night to like for something and then there was a cloud blocking the sun but you still took the photo doesn't make it a good photo like your photo sucks and yeah it sucks that you work so hard for it but maybe somebody just got there one day like at 5 30 a.m right as the sun was about to come out there were any clouds in the sky set up in two seconds took the photo and it's a much better photo than yours same yeah. thing for like film like you shot it on film good for you it's that doesn't automatically make it a better photo. But yeah. what do you guys think? Oh, by the way, there's a baby crying in the background. That's mine. I apologize. He's probably going <laughs> to do it all show. You'll learn to it yeah. like I do. Yeah. Um, he's broken. He's broken. <laughs> right Someone now. fix it. Yeah. Um, Someone needs to replace the, the amount of effort I put into parenting doesn't make me a good father. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I think that it's, that it's a multifaceted, uh, question i guess because i think that there's definitely like an aura of respect around film photography for sure and like in some of you know these world-renowned photographers or best legendary photographers that shot in film it definitely at least in my opinion when i look at their work i'm like damn and they did it in film you know what i mean but, but i don't think that it necessarily is the reason for the photo to be good. Does that make sense? Fair enough. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark, and then I'll circle back to what Christian just said. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think multifaceted is, or, you know, you can look at it from different angles, right? It's like, what does, if I make a photo and I put work into it, you know, either, you know, shot on film, developed it myself, scanned it myself, or, you know, went through some ordeal to get this photo, I think and this is a challenge I run into sometimes, especially when I'm like trying to color Lightroom. It's like, you start to kind of get these attachments to the photos and, you know, you, you try to, you kind of remember like, well, here's what I go through for this photo. And it, it, for me at least permeates into the photo and like wh what attachment I have to it. So I think there's that aspect of it. And the other aspect of it to me is, is kind of like the social media part of it, where it's like, as a viewer, you know, people hashtag or sometimes mention what gear they took the, the photo with and you mentioned this last time, Yanni, about like you, you might even accidentally, you know, uh, tag a, a photo shot with your phone with Q2, right? Or whatever, like a Q2, which it probably wasn't, but you just kind of have it or whatever, put it out there. And I'm wondering, or, or I shouldn't say I'm wondering, I, I know some people probably look at it and I'm like, oh, that's awesome, right? This was shot on a Q2 so, or shot on whatever it is that you're tagging. So it, I think it, it does play, although it shouldn't, but I think it does play on both ends to what either value or respect people have on a photo, because if there's any aspect of it, they can kind of garner, like, again, to your point, Christian, right. To, you know, say, Oh, wow. And he shot it on film, right. There's like a level of difficulty or, or, or something else mm -hmm. interesting about it. Mm -hmm. I think the film part, is, I, I think I can appreciate that. Right. Because it's like, you know, you, you don't have the flexibility like you do with digital. So I, I think generally speaking, if I see something that I know is shot on film, it's a great shot, great expose, whatever, you know, it, I, I do have a little bit more respect for it, generally speaking. But, you know, uh, you know, again, the idea is I don't think any of that should matter and it should stand alone. And I think, again, social media is kind of I, I wouldn't say ruined it, but it's definitely added, um, you know, some element to it where it's like you start to kind of, I find myself doing it, right? So I'm kind of talking from my own experience, right? Not really judging others. I find myself kind of looking at hashtags and saying like, oh, what did they shoot this on? Or like, I'm curious, or as I'm looking through, I see this, I'm like, oh, this is shot in M10. Okay, you know, right. Yeah. Now I have some relation to it. So yeah. anyway. But go so ahead, both of you kind of touched on it. Like 
shooting it, let's say on film or like on an iPhone or something is a forced multiplier. Like if you took a great photo on film, like, all right, let's use Alan Shatler, like his super contrast, everything's white, the subject's kind of gray and everything else is black. Like that's amazing on digital, but you have all this like latitude that you could play with in Photoshop and Lightroom and everything. If you take a photo like that on film, yeah, that's even more impressive. But without even knowing what's on film, that's still an impressive photo no matter what. So shooting it on film can make a great makes a great photo more impressive, but it doesn't make a bad photo good. Like, yeah. oh, like I this photo came out blurry and the it was off center and the subject's halfway in it. But I only had one shot, it was on film and I couldn't see what I got. So I thought it was good. So let me post it anyway. No, I don't give a shit. Like, yeah. Like your photo still sucks. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I like to think of, when it comes to the subject, I like to think of uh, one of my favorite photographers, Alex So, who kind of doesn't necessarily forward think his ideas, but kind of um, desarrollar, like, what's that word? Like, uh, he kind Evolve. of, like, yeah, he evolves with them with an initial idea of like, I kind of want to go out and do this thing and go on this adventure and see what I can find. And, and then he'll like go out, like really out of his way to make these, these really interesting photographs. Um, and in a way you can describe that as the modality of the photograph, right? Cause he like went on all these great lengths to make these photographs and they really are amazing photographs. And I, I actually, I've seen interviews with him where, for example, he won't even take out his camera. Uh, if, let's say he's going to take a portrait of someone that he did, that he just met. He'll literally like hang out with that person and have conversation for hours, sometimes days before he even takes out his camera to take a photo of that person. You know what I mean? Or to make a photo of that person, I should say, cause he shoots normally on large format. Um, and I think that that's that definitely adds to the photo when you look at the photo. It's such a great photo, and then it's explained like it has like a backstory. You're like, damn, that makes it even better. You know what I mean? But, yeah. But again, like like you said, it was a great photo without even knowing the story and the backstory made it better. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times, like you'll go on Petapix, some somebody will be like, oh, I try to like uh, there'll be an article about somebody that still shoots like a twenty year old like digital camera. It's like. And, but I still get great photos. I'm like, no, these, like, there's nothing impressive about these photos at all. Mm -hmm. And they think they're impressive because they look decent being taken on a 20 year old camera. Like, just if you put yeah. that, if you put them on a wall somewhere and you let somebody look at them without telling them what it was shot on, they'll just walk right by this photo. Mm -hmm. If you have to tell the story of the photo to make the photo stand out, that's a problem. Yeah. The photo oh, for sure. Photo 100%. Without the story. I agree with that. So, I agree with yeah. that. For sure. But I think that like, I think with Instagram and social media, as, as to Mark, what Mark was saying was, is that like social media has added this whole kind of panel to like being cool to shoot, like shooting film has become this thing. That's like the cool kids do it. You know what I mean? So now anything that's shot on film is like, oh, that's cool because it's <laughs> shot on film. And I think that that's kind of what this conversation is about. Um, but what I would, I wish people would remember is more so like what makes a good photograph. And for me, it's several things, the moment, the light, the subject, um, and then on top of everything, having a backstory, having an adventure behind it, having a purpose to it, or maybe even like, dude, I was walking down the street, minding my own business. And all of a sudden I turned around, I happened to have my camera on me. And I took like this incredible photograph that came out like Alan Schaller, or like Phil Penman or something like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, then yeah. that makes it cool too. Like that, you yeah. know, that adds to the story of the photo as well. Um, but I don't think that only shooting it on film makes it interesting. Like it just, yeah. you can't, you know, I can take and I guess you can say the same thing about shooting on Leica. I mean, I kind of have had to get myself to realize just because I shoot Leica doesn't mean every photo I take with my Leica is a good photo, you know, like, yeah, 
if anything, <laughs> actually, I heard, sorry to interrupt, Mark. Uh, oh, go Mark. ahead. Um, I heard this wedding photographer once uh, that I did a workshop for. Her name is Susan Stripling. She was saying how like she feels like she only take she only makes one good photograph a year, if that. And like that really kind of stood out to me. And I always remember that where it's like, yeah, you can take a lot of good photos uh, or a lot of great photos even, but that those photos that are just like, whoa, you know, how did this happen kind of thing is, is sometimes even once in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So, and it, and she shoots on digital. You know what I mean? Like she shoots on digital. She doesn't shoot film or anything like that. So, so I don't I mean, think that plays a part into it, you know? Like using that as an example, let's wedding photographer shooting Leica, a rangefinder. Mm -hmm. The first kiss photo. Oh, I wasn't able to focus it in time. It came out a little bit blurry, but I'm shooting I'm shooting your wedding photos on an M10 and it's a Summicron lens and it's all, the bride's going to be like, my photo's blurry. <laughs> like, that is that is it she doesn't care about your stupid story that is yeah that is like, the definitive uh, minute, yeah. Like, yeah, you worked really hard fair, to do it to be fair though and this is i mean n neither here nor there but if you're shooting a wedding with a like a range finder i would imagine that you've been either a doing it for a while or you're confident enough of course to shoot a yeah. range finder you should be. at a wedding yeah, like, yeah. yeah. but i'm just saying yeah. like, i don't think but that, yeah that's like, he, he's I think he's using an extreme no, of course, example, of course. Right? But like, like I don't think like Bench Heish, I don't think Bench Heish would ever miss a kiss photo. You know what I mean? And he like, shoots with yeah. an M10. So like we were looking at houses before we started recording here, and we were like <laughs> talking about people's ugly, time. ugly kitchens. Some guy built a kitchen with like the most high tech, easiest tools, and some guy built a, a kitchen with a hammer and like, a ruler and a level. That guy worked a lot harder, but his kitchen's super ugly. Do you want that kitchen? No. Who cares how hard you worked on it? Give me like, yeah. give me like the guy who built the kitchen. Give me the guy who built the kitchen by like putting it up pre-built and just yeah. stood it on the wall. It looks nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think you know, go, going back to what we said, like there's there's different angles to look at it, or to what I was saying earlier, right? I think you know, going back to your Alex Soth example, for instance, Christian, right? There's a guy that was on a, a couple episodes back on the Candela podcast. Uh, Jordan Hammond, I think his name was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he, I don't know if you heard the episode, but he was talking about, you know, he's a quote unquote travel photographer. Travel photographer so he yeah. is. <laughs> Cameo by Vivi. He was, um, he was talking about like, you know, this, the backstories and different things that he went through to get certain photos. Now I, I you know, quickly looked at his work and I was like, yeah, it, it's seriously impressive by itself. I didn't need the story, but you know, on the flip side of the story or the gear or anything doesn't matter. It's always, I think, kind of cool when, especially as the photo maker slash taker, right? The you're you're happy with a photo that may not necessarily even be the strongest photo or anything like that, but it, it, it kind of brings you back to either like the moment or what went up to getting the photo or what you went through, right? And that's more like to me, I think, experiencing the photo as well. You know, again, as a person taking it now, whether or not that particular story translates to the viewer, right? In the same way, or if the photo stands by itself alone as a good photo, you know, as a consequence of that, or, or not necessarily as a consequence, but as a side effect, if you will, whatever, um, is another story. But I think there's still something to be said about like, you know, what you went through or your experience getting to that photo. I think there's still value in that as, you know, just, let's be honest to enjoy the hobby or enjoy you know being into photography it's like you know what did you go through oh you know i traveled you know halfway across the country i i did this i did that you know i, I there's a picture that i took it's not even that impressive again i haven't shared it like it's that great but there's a picture i took of um this we were in china me and my wife we were on a tour so we went to Sorry, my son is knocking at the door for a second. So I'll finish the story and I'll go get him and go off mute for a sec. Um, we're, 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 we go to this park and there's like an older, you know, American woman on the tour or British, I think she's British and an older Chinese woman. And like, neither of them spoke the same language, but they were there. Like if you, if you're there for that moment, you would see them having this conversation. It's like, they're having a conversation. Neither of them speak the same language. <laughs> But like the emotion was there and like I, I you know while that was happening i took a picture and it's like it's them kind of like hugging and laughing and like you know the the asian ladies like the chinese ladies like kind of like with her 
her face kind of laughing, like she's laughing at something, whatever. And the other lady's like kind of in her shoulder laughing, laughing. And to me, I think it was just like such an interesting moment. And like, sure, to everybody else, it's just, it's just a picture of, you know, two women hugging, whatever, and laughing. I mean, you know, the emotion is clearly there. But to me, because I know the story and I saw what happened there, it's it's one of these pictures. I'm like, every time I see it again, it's not portfolio material. It's not print and put on a wall material, but it's like, that was a really cool moment because the moment was there and I captured it as best as possible. I mean, you know, how else could I, a photo tell you exactly what's going on. Right. I mean, you can make assumptions about it and, and what happened and, you know, who knew what or, or whether or not they were even here in the U S or, 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 or abroad. So I think there's still some value in the experience in making that photo, regardless of whether or not like it, makes it all the way to the viewer i i still think there's some value in that so i mean i, I th like i mentioned before i think the most important thing in a photograph is the actual moment you know what yeah. i mean even when it yeah. comes to even when it comes to a portrait like when you take a portrait of someone even if like an up close portrait of someone you have to capture that moment where they're like at their most vulnerable you know what i mean at their most like interesting moment in in your facial expression and how you look in the laugh you're making or in this in the smir like the smirk you have like it's about the moment if you don't capture that moment it doesn't matter how the photo was made you know because then it just loses interest like to what mark was saying about like the his travel photography and like the, the ladies like i don't know i haven't seen the photos so i don't know how good of a photo is on its own but to him the story matters personally which is another thing like i have a photo that i took in jamaica at uh shoddy or scotty's mark mm -hmm. and it's and i think <laughs> scotchies. It's just, scotchies so it's both things <laughs> combined <laughs> so it's a photo like of the guy cooking and there's kind of like smoke and i took it on my little olympus xa1 you have a similar oh, yeah, photo yeah, as one says like wait yeah. a minute <laughs> and mark has a similar like, photo, I'm sure. photo i took <laughs> and i'm sure everybody that's been there has taken the same photo and it's mine's kind of blurry it's not super in focus or anything but i love that photo I posted it before, I think, and nobody really gave a crap because it's not a good photo. But I know but the backstory to it. And I know what it means to me. Let, and I let like me interject for a second. Because I've been there and because I've seen that same scene and photographed it, every time I see that picture, I know exactly what you're talking Like, that's a dope ass picture because it's just, it, 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 again, I know the story, right? Mm -hmm. Without yeah, him even also like, about yeah, the moment you know I mean? in terms of nostalgia too. Yeah, you know what I mean. But like, I mean, yeah. if you've ever been there, like it's like a little like hut, if you will, right? They cook in and whatever, and they, they cook on like the pimento wood and everything, and it's like this smoky little area, like in the back where they are. So like you, you get this kind of like hazy, you know, dark view with almost like you know the, the photo I shot was in color, uh, you know, digital is you know you could almost say like silhouettes of people like working on the stuff. So his was black and white. So you can, it was a little bit more contrast and everything. But again, to me, I appreciate that because I've been in that scene. I, I've seen the same thing and taken the same photo. Well, I obviously respect times. his more because it's black and white. So. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's on film. Yeah. Yeah. And, film. and it's on film. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? Obviously he wins. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, but I, I, I guess like, that's what I'm getting at is like, you know, the, the, I think it adds an element to it and that shouldn't be completely discounted, right? If there's a story to tell. I mean, you mentioned it earlier, Phil Penman talking about like, you know, the paparazzi pictures and everything like that. I think, you know, if there's a story uh, attached to it, um, it, it's, it, it, it always can count for more, I think, as long as like there is that narrative around it. So like Phil Penman, again, had this whole, you know, show whatever at the uh or the like a store by me before mm -hmm. COVID hit um and that was kind of cool to you know hear him talk about his work and his career and everything so like every photo that he showed seemed to me at least to resonate a little bit more because he kind of had a build-up to it so maybe not as a standalone photo throw it on the wall or put it on Instagram but they were but... also all good photos <laughs> yeah yeah that, that to be fair yes you know but I, the if you think about the photo he was talking about in in particular he's talking about turning around and taking pictures like paparazzi instead of focusing on like the celebrity mm -hmm. i don't remember what the picture looked like specifically it's not maybe that's why but even just the idea of like oh that's cool that's the story behind whatever right it, i'm sure it was like a bunch of people with cameras and you know some you know interesting angle or something mm -hmm. um but you, you get what i'm saying like it, i feel like the appreciation for that photo 
was a little bit more because it's part of like a bigger story, if you will. Right. It's, it's yeah, just yeah, one totally. picture depicting, you know, a, an actual story, right? If you think about it, right? His, his, his progression into street photography and his career and so on and what he was doing different. So, <clears throat> yeah, man. Um, go ahead, Jan. No, I'm trying to, I'm looking down because I'm trying to find the photo from Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that there's also something to be said about like, with with everything i said before about film photography and not like you know just because it was taken on film doesn't make it interesting but i think someone that takes a photo with a large format film camera for example like an eight by ten or even a four by five i feel like that person always has more intention of doing something and more often than not at least from what i've seen maybe this is a very generalized broad thing to say but for the most part is usually interesting I mean, large format just gives an interesting look to begin with. Um, and and again, like I think if you're going to shoot large format, you probably know at least a little bit about what, what it is you're doing, you know. Um, so uh, it's just it's it really depends on the photograph itself. Um, I mean, I've seen photographs that some of my favorite fo photographers have made and it doesn't interest me at all, you know? And then I've seen photographs that I have no idea who the photographer is. And I'm like, whoa, how did this happen? You know? Mm -hmm. um, so ultimately, I think the answer to the question of the show, does the way that a photograph is made, how is it, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> does the way a photograph is made make a difference in how it's perceived is that the question uh, we'll go with that okay. <laughs> we'll go with that yeah okay yeah. yeah so i think the answer is n yes and no <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah it depends it, it if the photo is good to begin with it makes it better if the photo sucks it still sucks yeah yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that yeah well I, I, again i think depends on which side of the coin you're looking at or like it, so I will share it because I have no shame. If you did, you turn on my, my screen. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So I'm going to show you the set from that. So if you guys can see, all right. So here's the the, the scene that was, as it was playing out. Right. So mm -hmm. there's you know when the lady was was they first met and again they don't speak the same language. She was Australian. I just saw it on thing. So they don't speak the same language. But for some reason, you know, like this was kind of happening behind us. Right. My me and my wife over here taking pictures they kind of like you know uh started again talking to each other somehow and you know there's this whole scene unfolding where like you know they're laughing and so on and then like again they had this little embrace and you know again it's not a to me a great photo by itself i mean it doesn't you know again if i this is not something you print but this photo reminds me of that moment and what happened leading up to it so like, i've actually shared a great photo though i've shared this photo with the, the lady on the left because we had like a group on the tour group and you know i was like hey you know remember this this whole thing so you know I, I think what it also brings up when i talk about this photo and just like the scenario and you know what it is is like okay what's the purpose of your work at this is not gallery work right this is you know capturing memories this is sharing emotion if you will so sometimes i think you know especially in instagram age it's like all right you know let's let's find that photo that's like the instagram banger banger that would get a bunch of likes and everything this is to me, not one of those because maybe, maybe in like the the whole narrative form, like I wrote up the whole story, like I'm telling you guys about what it is. It, it might get some people to kind of like um, uh, think positively about it. But to me, like that, you know, again, this is not something I'm going to share like publicly to post or anything like that. Or, or maybe if I made like some kind of photo book or something, maybe I would. But this is not. And I don't know the way to describe it. This is not like portfolio material this is not again here let me post a strong standalone image I, you know I, I don't even think like i said it's a great image generally right it's just it's just a moment that i happened to capture because i was there but it still has a lot of value to me like i'd never delete this or never you know discard this phone at all because it reminds me of that trip it reminds me of that moment it reminds me of and it's, i kind of get transported into that whole trip and, and appreciate that now you know again I, i've told you guys a story so you know the story behind it but if you just saw this randomly, I don't know that it would make any sense to you, right? I mean, 
yes, there's a typical question is like, oh, well, you know, I wonder what they're laughing about. I wonder what they're hugging about, whatever. But I don't know that it's a strong photo. My light just died. <laughs> That's what I get. I, I had it on full blast. So, that was all right. I want to see statement. Yanni. Yanni, did you find your photo? No, I can't find it. Okay. I mean, I was just, I'm just thinking of Mark's. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you have one. I know you I have do. One. I can't find it though. Oh, you know what? I, I'm going to see if I can find it because it was actually not yours, but a similar one to kind of talk about it, you know? Um, but yeah, so I, again, I think that's my fuel opinion on it is that I think it still matters, but it's probably more of a personal thing. And it, it's, you know, typical thing like, hey, you know, Matt Day taking pictures of his kids. Sure, they're pictures of his kids and, you know, they may be great photos by itself, but it probably means a lot more to Matt Day than it does to us. You know what I mean? Same thing with me and photos For of my sure. kids. And know? I think that he knows that too. Like, I don't think that, yeah, he of course. Does yeah. his channel like wow? My photos must be this must be like so aesthetically pleasing to other people or something. Like, I don't think that's what his channel's about. You know? Yeah. One of those things like I'm gonna analogy I was thinking about earlier was like kind of like autocrossing. You could go out there. <laughs> okay. Like, right. I didn't right. expect that, but go ahead. <laughs> so, you could be the slowest person out there, but if your fourth run is twenty seconds faster than your first run, you're extremely proud of yourself. Nobody else gives a damn. You're still the slowest guy out there. But you're <laughs> yeah. very proud yeah. of your improvement. Like, it's the same way. Like, you could be really proud of a photo because you worked really hard to take it on film or the way you shot or whatnot. Even if it's a bad photo, you're allowed to be proud of it. It can mean a lot yeah. to you. So this is the photo, by the way, that I took. But it's of the same. Again, here's like the broader scene. Right. So there's like, again, this little hut here. And they're cooking jerk chicken and jerk pork and everything in the bat on the pimento wood and, you know, covered up with those things. So, like, this is the photo I took. There's a couple I took, actually, from that scene. Um, so, if you want, we can just do this. Uh, hang on. Let me get out of this thing. Where do we do this? Where's the black and white switchy thingy? Uh, there we go. This is Yanni's photo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even joking it kind of looks just like this I'm, i actually like this like well, basically yeah the same right? light so, coming into the window yeah so so again because i've seen this scene before because i know the place i've been in scotchies obviously a ton of times mm -hmm. when i saw yanni's picture i was like dude that's awesome because it was basically i mean you know not exactly this but the light coming through the window you know it was filmed so it was even more contrasting than this it had this kind of you know you can't really make out the guy other than his you know shape if you will there so i really enjoyed the photo when i saw it again maybe people don't know and they're just like what is this guy doing in this weird place with all the smoke what is that on the wood right but we know what it is we know the place again if i jump back to like the, the broader view of the place we know what it looks like but this tighter shot of it is kind of like, you know, what I think made it. So, uh, man, I'm going to leave this in black and white. <laughs> Just thought about it. I'm going to leave it in black and white. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I'm going to actually leave the first one in black and white. Thanks, Yanni. No problem. There you go. Now you have my photo. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, so, you know, I think that matters. Photo. All right. Thank you. See, you see, the story matters too. But um, yeah, I, I think. Yeah, but that's a cool picture matters. even without the story. The story just adds to it. Yeah. And I, I thought so too. I mean. Yeah, and the fact that of both of pictures. you guys, wait, you guys weren't there together, right? No, 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 no. That makes it even no. more interesting because like two different people were there randomly and both took essentially the same image. Yeah. Well. When did you go? This was 2000. And it's not like a touristy image or anything like that. Oh, no, it is. Yeah. Yeah. This was 2013. So it's not like, oh, two different people took a picture of the Eiffel Tower or something yeah. like you know? well, to be fair, this is kind of a tourist spot, but I think that's exactly it, right? I mean, I showed you what the place looked like overall. Like, you know, there's always people lined up there ordering food, everything like that. But I think if I were to like characterize like, okay, well, what I thought about going into the shot is like, well, here are these guys with this very traditional Jamaican cooking style. And just, again, the, the light coming through the window, the smoke, again, the, all the elements that I guess you'd say make a good photo, mm -hmm. right? I saw it and I was like, all right, well, you know, let me go. And going back to like what it what makes it, this was shot on a micro four thirds camera with a kit lens. <laughs> this is nothing fancy. Oh my god, such an impressive photo now. <laughs> yeah, right. So what I'm getting is like it wasn't shot on like uh was shot on full frame, it wasn't shot on anything particularly high. And this was shot on, in fact, I'm pretty sure that was shot on uh hold on, I'll tell you right now. It was an Olympus EPL three. Oh sorry, EPL five whatever it, the little you know 
no EVF, point and shoot, e, not point and shoot. Um, it was an interchangeable lens camera, obviously, but to, I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it to you. With a very simple camera. Dude, I have pictures, like for me personally, are some of my favorite pictures, like pictures that I have of my niece and nephew when they were kids and stuff that I took with like the iPhone 3 or whatever. And they're terrible quality. And they, you know, and I wasn't even a photographer back then, but they just mean <laughs> a lot to me. So, um, yeah. and that plays back into like the Matt Day thing. Like sometimes, no matter how crappy your camera or how good or bad you are of a photographer, oh my God, that thing looks yeah, so, that thing. <laughs> that, that looks so weird. 60 megapixels. Um, or, uh, well, yeah, I guess the same sensors on the Fire. So, yeah, this little thing is what shot that with a kit lens that came with it. So one of the most fun cameras I ever used was probably the first camera that I think I used after DSLRs that really got me, like, excited about photography. I took this thing down there everywhere because it was so tiny. Uh, um, but, yeah, so anyway. Just I always look back so. at those. I still want to buy one. Oh, I did. I almost bought one. They're like 50 months ago. They're like 40 or 50 dollars now. They're still great oh, cameras. Yeah. 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 I, I legit thought about doing with that with like the body calf lens and just like, all right, this is my throw it in a bag. Like instead of like a GR3, instead of a, you know, X100, just throw it somewhere. Keep that. There's a body calf lens, by the way, which let me see if I can find that too. Which it's, as it sounds, like a body cap. That's it's no bigger than that. And it's, you know, I think fixed focus. Yeah. Where it has like two focuses, like a close and a oh, far. Oh, yeah, it basically. does have like a super far and yeah, not, not infinity. But it's like a it's a 15 millimeter f8 lens, if I remember correctly. So mm -hmm. that's a 30 millimeter equivalent. So it's basically 30, 35, like between 20 mm -hmm. and 35. And dude, I mean, if it costs nothing and like you don't really care about breaking it, just keep it and carry it everywhere. It's it's completely pocketable, like not even a joke, pocketable. I uh, have, here it is. I still have it. I have one there Fuck. on the GF2. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! yeah. So the GF two, I think, actually, was smaller. Yeah, I've made prints from photos I've taken with that thing. Yeah, and so they're so much more impressive like. because I did all the body cap lens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So look at this thing. This thing is that's what it looks like. Completely tiny, yeah, but pretty powerful. So you know, sixteen megapixels. I was gonna say I have an Olympus though. pen, but I don't. I have an Olympus Trip thirty five. Ah, uh, yeah. This is this is the Trip thirty five is is film though, right? Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. It was my uh, grandfather's camera that he used to take um, to go to Cuba. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So, but the trip is a full 35 millimeter, right? Yeah. Because yeah, the pens use half of the That's 35 right. millimeter frame. It's literally right here. Give me a second. It's this guy. Like the pen is literally my nightmare. Yeah, those are cool. Oh, it's the work. The pen. Uh, it worked enough. perfectly. I actually, um, I actually sent it. So my grandfather gave it to me, and it was in terrible condition. So I, um, I sent it to a guy in London, and he had it for about six months. Jesus, <laughs> because the guy ended up getting sick or something. Uh, but he he made it brand new. Nice. Yeah. So it's it works perfectly fine. It's actually got a roll of film in it. That I need to finish. <laughs> it's been there for like a year and a half. Yeah, that's that's why the <laughs> I legit have like three film different film cameras that have film that God knows what's on it. Like it's just been in the camera forever. Speaking of which, I'm like I'm trying to go through all my like my cameras are loaded too. I'm trying to shoot them now because we have a film lab opening up in Miami or just opened up. So I'm like mm -hmm. I want to take my photos to get developed locally. Dude, look yeah. at this. It's actually it, it's a 2.8 40 millimeter. And it's a Zuiko lens. Let's see. Zuiko. Smile. There we go. <clears throat> All right, time to turn it in. All, All right, guys. Right. Sorry well, about the yelling baby. The fact yeah. that uh, that I just took a film photo makes me the best film photographer of all time. That's going to be the most impressive photo. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. One for the history books. Yeah, who takes a film photo of a podcast? So. <laughs> what, first first, first of the camera. Kind. What's a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Later, guys. All, all right, right guys. Yeah. We'll Later. talk soon, right. guys.